fashion writers are always on the lookout for novelty. But this year, all of them did miss one particular item in one designer's winter collection. Perhaps understandably, because it was a fashion event that happened not in Rome or in Paris or in London or in New York, but near Carlisle, at 2,000 feet up in the Cumberland Fells. But it was a fashion event that did affect 3,000 ladies. 3,000 of the chicest sheep in Britain. And not just chic, sensible too, as you'd expect with country girls. For thousands of years, man has taken sheep's wool and used it to help to keep himself warm in winter. Now, for the first time, he's returning the compliment. There is something absurd about animals in skirts, partly because the animals in question are usually pussycats and poodles, luxurious little lapdogs mollycoddled by overindulgent middle-aged ladies. But there's nothing silly or sentimental about these warmly clad black-faced youths. They're not dressed to kill, they're dressed to live. During the bitter winter of 1947, over a million sheep perished of cold in Scotland alone. And it was in Scotland that Mr. William Wilson used to farm. When he moved south three years ago and came down here to Castle Carrick near Carlisle, he found that his sheep faced as tough a winter here in the Pennines as in the Scottish Highlands. This 7,000-acre farm rises to 2,000 feet, and from October to March there are frequent blizzards and bitter winds. To protect his flock from the weather, Mr. Wilson thought of building permanent winter shelters, but that would have meant artificial feeding and was quite uneconomical. He found that temporary shelter belts were all right for the short, sharp blast, but in a prolonged storm, the sheep wouldn't venture out of them to find food. There was also the problem of getting building materials to the outlying mountainside where they were most needed. So eventually, he decided that the only answer was to give each sheep a shelter she could carry with her. And he set about designing a sheep coat. Two years ago, he put his idea to the test. He fitted out 45 of his poorest sheep with a specially made jute jacket. Between January and May, 120 sheep died of cold but not one of the coated animals was among the casualties. All 45 survived the hardest winter in living memory, and each one of them gave birth to a lamb. Last year, Mr. Wilson dressed up his whole flock for the winter, and now he's patented the coat and put it on the market. Mr. Wilson, what were the factors involved uh, when you were styling these, this sheep coat? Well, I had to have the sheep with complete freedom of movement. A... Yeah. Uh, to covering sides. Uh, I'm surprised to see that you've got a panel in the back here. Why is uh, I, I would doesn't it doesn't it get fouled? No, it doesn't get fouled, and a, a sheep always turns a tail to the wind mm -hmm. in storm conditions, mm -hmm. and that's one of the main bits I think that need protection. One would always think that the sheep is the best protected of all animals against the cold. It's got that enormous uh -huh. fleece. What does this do in addition to the fleece? Well, it insulates, it gives it a cover. In fact, it's almost like a, I would say, a sheep chin skin jacket. Yes. You've got your wool inside and the, the help to insulate on the outside. The skin outside? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the same principle is a sheep chin skin jacket. So in fact the sheep would be better off if she had a skin outside and, uh, and, and, and the fleece on the inside. Oh, well you could put it that way but it would be kind of hard to breed them that way. <laughs> well now how actually is it fixed? I see there's a stitch here. What? The, it's stitched to the wool with two stitches and you can either put that one there or lower down a wee bit on each side. Mm -hmm. Same on both sides. Uh, you've had one year now in which to judge the success of the experiment. Uh, how much better are you off financially? Well, before I did this, I had to send 600 of my young sheep down to the country to winter, uh -huh. which cost two pound a head, 1,200 pounds. So you're saving 1,200 pounds. You've got to buy your coats, which cost, what, 700? Uh, 700, just over, over 700. So, in fact, you, you, you've got a saving of 400 pounds before uh -huh. you start. Yes. Right. Just by wintering them up here. Uh -huh. well, what other financial advantage? The wool. The wool, they grow more wool with the coat on. Uh -huh. And it's a better quality wool. 
I've got a better grade for my old system than I've ever had. The whole thing totals up to a fair amount of profit. Like what? Well, rather over the 2,000. 2,000 pounds in one year? Ah. Uh -huh. We had a control lot run last year. Yeah. We were getting three quarters of a pound on the U, extra wool. We were getting a pound and a quarter on the young sheep, extra, yeah. from the, those that hadn't them on, which almost covers the price of the coat in the first year. Do you mean that the extra wool that you're getting is enough to pay for the coat, or almost enough? It, it, it covers it, and I'll get another year out of my coat. Well, if Mr. Wilson uh, does try to push the sales of his sheep coat in America, he'll undoubtedly have the wholehearted support of the Society for the Prevention of Indecency in Animals, which for years has been trying to get dogs into trousers. But he may meet some hostility here at home, from the Society for the Preservation of Rural England, for example. As for me, I shall always feel just a moment of doubt when I see that advertisement that says so confidently, there is no substitute for wool. Good night.